Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to create uh, just some very simple metals using Render Man. You can use this as a basis for a bunch of different things. Um, I'm going to use procedurals in this one, but if you have some maps created in another piece of software like 3D Code or Substance, you can basically replace the procedural that I'm using with a texture map using a Pixar Texture node. All right, so um, I've got our robot here. It's been a little while. The um, first thing we're going to do is just create a Pixar surface shader and assign it. Uh, and I'll just change that to be called Pixar Metal. Then we'll jump into the Hype Shade Editor. So what I'm going to do um, for this example is I'm going to use a fractal. So I'm just hitting Tab and typing in Fractal. Uh, and I'm going to run the result RGB into the specular face color. And then I'm going to create an invert node, tab, and then type in invert, and run the result RGB into the invert, and then the invert into the diffuse color. Now, the reason you do this is generally with metals, um, if you're using a texture map, you want to invert the specular face color to the diffuse color, and that way you'll get that metallic look. And I'll show you what it looks like. Just do a quick IPR. Okay, so you see that we're getting some um, visual variety on our surface. We've got no um, actual specular um, difference at the moment. Um, a little bit of difference in value, but mainly, uh, but the exact same amount of roughness. So it looks like a sort of high gloss metal at the moment, but we can go a bit further. So what we'll do in the Hypershade Editor is we'll re run our result F into our specular roughness. If you've got a roughness map, then you'd obviously want to run that into your specular roughness. But for the sake of this argument, we're just going to use that. So you can see that's starting to look a little bit more like a um, sort of type of aluminium. Um, we're getting a nice little bit of uh, reflection variation. And the specular reflection overall um, is... Uh, looking quite nice. So how it's working is the um, areas that are um, a high value in the texture map, which is a value of like one or white, are getting more sp uh, specularity than the areas that are darker or a value of zero. Now we can actually control the value of our base color um, using a HSL node. So if we hit tab and type in HSL, we're going to pick that HSL node. And if we run our result from our Pixar invert into that, and then run the result RGB into the diffuse color. We can now adjust the luminance. So if we wanted to go to a much darker metal, you can get something like that, which is sort of more a gunmetal color, as you can see. But it still retains a specular reflection. Further to that, uh, a way to further improve the metal color is if we hit tab and type in um, blend, we have got a Pixar blend node. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the Pixar invert into the top RGB and then in the attributes we're going to change that to be set to multiply and then we're going to pick a blue color um, sort of a skyish blue and then I'm just going to make it a very low uh, high value so now when we run that into our HSL uh, which I'm just going to set to be a bit lighter or IPR so you can see there's a bit more blue being mixed in now, um, generally, you're going to have a, a very small amount of the color itself if you're looking to get something kind of realistic looking. So just a little bit of variation might be all you need. And because it's on multiply, you can see it's obviously affecting the darker areas more. Uh, we could set it to something like uh, overlay if you wanted to get a more consistent and then once again, you can play with the luminance. So if you're looking for something that's slightly more um, aluminium looking, that sort of a little bit of blue in there um, sort of helps it. And obviously aluminium is uh, generally, generally um, pretty smooth. So you probably won't see this um, oxidization in it so much, uh, but maybe like a 10 or something like that. Now we can actually create a sort of um, harder oxidization effect as if uh, maybe something more acidic had been sitting on top of the metal. So if we create a uh, threshold, Pixar threshold, now we're going to run our specular face color into that RGB input. Um, and then we're going to create a float. So basically that's going to take our RGB information and change it to a float. Um, and then we're going to 
uh, put that in our specular roughness and sorry that RGB information needs to stay in specular face color. So now if we IPR, you can see that hard transition between the areas that have got high value and the areas that have got a darker value. So now that we have that threshold node, we can actually use that to control it. So the lower that threshold, less contrast there will be between those areas. And then you can bring it back in as you want. So say we want to really, um, an obvious transition there. Uh, we can also increase the transition width. So I'll blend it a little bit more and also set it to Gaussian if you want even more. And obviously you can go higher than 0.25, we go up to 0.75 if we want. So we get some really higher um, uh, contrast, uh, higher, sorry, uh, smoother transitions. And then we can blend it back out again with the threshold. Further to that, worth mentioning is under your primary specular, specular node, check your advanced settings for your specular model. Uh, oftentimes I'll actually use GGX for um, metals. I think it's just, it's got a sort of softer fall off um, for specularity. So it's it's a good sort of uh, place to start uh, before you start messing with all this stuff like I have. So I can just uh, go in and adjust some of this um, threshold and transition width obviously if I wanted to. So after you've, um, set up some basic parameters. Um, you can go obviously back into your fractal and adjust some of the settings there. Um, this is probably the best place to start. Increase the frequency if you want it to look like it's very oxidized or um, lower the frequency to look, make it look like it's sort of bigger and patchier. Um, you can use the lacinarity to increase or decrease the difference between sort of islands of um, darkness. And uh, just to go along and play with the rest of the settings. Um, obviously erosion is, if you want, want it to look like um, it is eroding, that's a good sort of thing to do. Um, and, you know, on from there. Um, this isn't a tutorial on um, how to use the fractal node, but the fractal node's great because you can use it for a lot of things. This is just one example. So um, yeah, use this as a base for creating um, some metals. Uh, obviously you don't even have to use any textures. If you just want to use a white specular and a black diffuse or a dark diffuse color, then you can do that as well. Um, I just find that this looks a little bit more interesting. And um, you can go and do some more uh, things to this. Check out uh, the facing ratio tutorial if you want to get some ideas with other things that you can add to it. Um, I'll probably do some more metal tutorials coming up, I think, because I get asked about metals a lot. So if there's a very specific type of metal you want to learn how to build, let me know in the comments and I'll have a look at it. Um, I've already done one on how to do a uh, painted rust, so check that out. That came out a couple of weeks ago. and That's a pretty good one if I do say so myself. Now, if you liked this tutorial and you found it helpful, uh, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials every week for products like RenderMan and other CG software. If you'd like to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.